Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, so we are the Nouveau, the, well, the people from Nouveau who are actually at FOSDEM today. Um, so there's Carol Herb, the new hire from Red Hat, working full time on um, on uh, on Nouveau. Then there's um, Pierre Moreau, who is also working on Nouveau, but from the community aspect. I mean, from yeah, as a community member, he doesn't get paid for it, but it's something that he's been doing, um, also related to his PhD in graphics. Ish, and uh, I'm Martin Perez. I'm an Intel developer, but I also am allowed to work in my spare time on uh, on Nouveau, and uh, so this work has nothing to do with uh, with Intel. So this is the legal disclaimer. I'm safe now. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna hand over the mic to Carol. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, short summary about what we want to talk about. First, I will give a short summary introduction about Novo. Um, then I will head on to talk about Pascal support and what we were working on regarding power management. Um, Pierre wants to talk about user space stuff like graphics and compute and so on. And then Martin wants to finish up with community stuff and the conclusion we have about things. Um, yeah, so Novo is like the open source driver for NVIDIA GPUs on Linux and um, because it's usually used as a default driver for NVIDIA GPUs, we want to provide a good out-of-box experience for the end user using their machines. And what we actually also want to have is like that users are able to use it for games and also compute workloads, which sometimes works and for some games it doesn't work out so well, but we want to work on this. So uh, we su support like most of the NVIDIA GPUs since all, all of those since 1998. Um, we have 2D and 3D acceleration working on like GPUs since 2003. Um, Non-officially we support up to OpenGL 4.5. There are some trademark s issues so we aren't able to export this expose this yet and there's also like the work uh, somebody worked on DirectX 9 support through Rhine so it's also nice and we are able to do accelerated video decoding on GPUs between 2004 and 2013 so talking about Pascal, uh, Pascal now um, it's like the current generation of desktop GPUs, which were like released two years ago, and it's so far the most locked down NVIDIA GPU. So we, we really can't do much on those because you need sign from, from uh, sign stuff for lots of stuff. So what we're currently supporting is mode setting, which you kind of need for display stuff and all the basic graphics to get something on the screen. So this is nice that this works. We also have 2D and 3D acceleration, um, but we kind of had to wait for one year or more for this because we need sign firmware to really do it in efficient enough way so users can actually use this. And we are also able to read out like the temperature on those GPUs, but... Just one thing, the reason why we have to wait is uh, because they are signed firmware, so only NVIDIA can put them up. So. That is why. Yeah, otherwise on GPUs before that we wrote the um, firmware ourselves and we can just use our firmware, but not on Pascal and also not on Maxover. So, But those issues now are more likely, uh, no, they are more related to Pascal in general. We can't change the fan speeds, we can't reclock the GPUs, we can't change the video bias, which we need to figure out what the bits in the video bias are there for. So we basically just switch something and see what uh, difference it makes for the NVIDIA driver. So we can't do this. And we are also not able to read out the current power consumption, which we need for power capping, stuff like this. So heading on to power management. Um, Lute Paul from Red Hat was working on clock gating, which is kind of a feature to turn off certain parts of the GPU to reduce the power consumption, which is a nice thing for laptops, but it's also a little bit important for per, uh, performance because you can have higher clocks and more performance this way. Um, we hope to get it 
landed for Kepler in a few weeks or days, whatever. Um, Martin was uh, working on fan ma management stuff over the last years. Um, we, we kind of like, obviously, we needed to uh, have higher fan speeds on temperature. It's supported pretty well on most GPUs, but there were like those kind of rare GPUs where um, there's a weird fan calibration we have to do. And since now we don't really were able to figure it out, Martin did some good work on this, but it's still like he says he, it makes no sense. So, um, but it's, it's important because there are some users with really loud fans and it's super annoying. And we hope that NVIDIA is about to release some documentation on this, so maybe we get with a working solution for this in, soon. Um, ben, Roy, and I were working on reclocking stuff. Um, we supported for Tesla and Kepler GPUs pretty well. And there is some ongoing work on Fermi, which I hope will be visible to users this year. There was some pretty good stuff uh, done this year, so it's nice. Um, I was also working on thermal throttling, which is kind of uh, needed, like if we come to a good uh, performance on GPUs, it might be that the GPU is getting pretty hot, so it's nice to be able to reduce the clocks in those cases. And for on-demand reclocking, um, we also need to figure out on the GPU how much of the GPUs you use and what loads there are, so there was, I was also working on this. Um, Power monitoring is um, important in case you have like your self-built system or whatever and you really have to uh, be aware of the power consumption of the GPU. So what we have to do is we have to figure out um, what it's like the official power consumption of, on the GPU and we have to be like cap this that we don't go uh, um, above this. So I was also working on this. So now I'll be talking about user space and mainly the graphics part and OpenCL as well. What's been do, uh, happening in the past year or so. So I'm not going to talk about Tesla because Tesla hardware was released in 2007, 2009 and is only capable of OpenGL 3.3. So there has been no progress to higher version of OpenGLs because of that. But on the other hand, Fermi hardware and more recent hardware, they can handle higher versions of OpenGL. And OpenGL 4.4 .4 and 4.3 and 4.5 have been landing in the past years. However, since OpenGL 4.4, to advertise the support, you need to pass the conformance test use from Kronos. And you need to submit results from that conformance. Um, in order to advertise 4.4, and that hasn't been done for Nuvo, so we don't advertise 4.4 and 4.5. So by default, you will get OpenGL 4.3. Uh, just uh, <coughs> on this topic, um, there's been a collaboration between uh, Kronos and the Xorg Foundation, so as open source drivers could uh, submit uh, conformance tests or results without paying, because usually you would be paying thousands of dollars, which we do not have as, uh, yeah. Well, we're just open source developers. So, uh, yeah, so this is a good shout out to, uh, to Kronos because that's uh, very appreciated. And, yeah, that's it. Yes. And uh, conformance test use is also now open source. So, we can run it. Yes. So, most of it at least should be open source. Um, regarding Vulkan, so Carol has been working on the NER to NVRA uh, translation pass, which, uh, so Intel has been working on SPURV to NER. So if we can get NER to NVRA, which is the intermediate representation we use in Nuvo, then we'll be able to invest SPURV, which is needed for Vulkan support and also for OpenGL 4.6 before you could use Pervy through an extension, but in 4.6 it's a core feature, so we need that support. And hopefully there might be some basic Vulkan driver this year. There is some work that needs to be done in the kernel part, and then 
it's implementing the API. So now on to compute. So I'm going to talk a bit more about Spurvy. So as I said, Spurvy is being used in Vulkan and OpenGL, but it's also now used in OpenCL. So before in OpenCL 1.2 and 2.0, you have to use an extension to use it, but in 2.1, it's now a core feature. So I've been working on adding Spurvy support to Clover, which is the OpenCL implementation in Mesa. So if currently there is only one driver with which you can use Clover, which is the Radeon driver, uh, possibly Radeon SI as well, uh, which is currently using the LLVM intermediate representation for representing the, the kernels. But I've been switching it to Spurvy, so that, that makes ingesting Spurvy directly also easier. So if you want to test that out, I've sent two versions to the mailing list already, and there's a third version that's been working on. You, can, you will need those softwares on the slide, and I'll put a more detailed explanation on how to do things and add the link to the event webpage so you can more easily get that working on your computer if you want to try it out. Uh, but I've also been working on OpenCL support for Nouveau through Spurvy as well. So instead of going from Spurvy to NER and then to NVI Air, I've been working on translating Spurvy directly to NVI Air. So what's the current status for that? So most arithmetic relation bit operations are supported, as well as atomics and conversions operations. You can call functions, and you can use basic control flow like if-else statements and loops. Uh, image report is a work in progress. It's not there yet, but getting there. Uh, there's some more memory operations that need to be implemented. And what's still missing, it's mainly group operations and a lot of OpenCL specific operations, even though Carol already implemented a few of them. So OpenCL also has a conformance test suite, and, which is open source. So currently, I've been running the test basic, which test basic operations you can do in OpenCL, try to have a, a broad overview of what's possible. And we have 36 out of 95 tests that uh, passes. But 27 of the failing ones are image related. So once the image supports lands, the passing rate should get improved by quite a bit. And if you want to try that out, it's about the same prerequisites as for the Spurvy stuff in Clover, with difference on the branch, uh, which isn't pushed out yet, but I'll do that soon. And regarding hardware status, uh, Tesla needs some more love on the memory management, but otherwise, other families should work. Uh, Maxwell and Pascal might need a little bit more tweaking, but basic stuff should work there. And now I'll let Martin talk about the community. Okay, I'm surprised that we are really on the time that we're expecting. Surprising. So yeah, well, I'm going to talk about the current members and uh, the history that we've had with NVIDIA, which um, is, is very interesting. Nine? Okay. <laughs> so, so right now we have three Red Hat developers working on Nouveau. It, it's a huge improvement. We used to have only Ben Skeggs working on it for, I don't know, the past 10 years. And then Paul got hired, I think it was last year. Um, he's been working not full-time on, on Nouveau, but um, but he's been helping quite... Oh, yeah, she, sorry. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's been, um, uh, well, good good work there. And then Carol has been hired this year, so... Last year. Oh, yes, you're <laughs> right. <laughs> Darn it, it's 2018 now. Okay, last year. Well, a couple of months ago. <laughs> Boom. So, uh, and um, yeah, so now he's working full time on, on reclocking, MESA, or compute related stuff. It's not, you know, super clear. It's not generally working on what is needed to be worked on, which is good. It's exactly what we need. Uh, but we also have community members. So, uh, not everyone is listed, but that's the main ones. So uh, RISKID, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. 
Um, it's Australian. Uh, so it's been working on the tooling. So IGT um, or Shader DB. So that's pretty good. That hopefully Nuvo is going to get uh, yeah IGT working quite well on it. And um, he's been also working on thermal management. He w really wants to get, uh, he has a laptop with a Pascal GPU and he would like to get it to work as well as possible. Then Ilya Mirkin uh, is, you know, a top star Mesa developer. Uh, he's been working on, on the hardest features of uh, uh, for OpenGL and is really doing an excellent job. Unfortunately, we had Samuel Pitoise last year, um, or two years ago, working and, and doing a lot of development for Nouveau, but he got hired by Valve and is not working on, on mostly on Radeon, but he's still here for reviews and, and things like this, so it's still nice to have him. So there's Pierre Moreau, uh, you're, you heard. Uh, me, yeah, I'm doing mostly fan management and power management. That's what I've been doing for the past eight years. <laughs> but fan management is the only thing that actually works. <laughs> the rest is well not even for everyone but yeah so I mean that's unfortunate but this is what fund management and power management is it's like how many ways do you need to uh, to dig a hole well apparently for fund management about 10 ways in in 10 years pretty good uh, Roy Split is uh, is also working on DVFS or reclocking related stuff and compiler optimizations. So yeah, Roy, Roy started at the same time as me, so in 2010, still working on it. And uh, well, maybe you, who someone in the room would be interested in uh, or in the in, in the stream to uh, to join us. But I'm I'm going to talk a bit later about this. So now on to uh, the relationship we have with with Nvidia. So in 2013, we had uh, the first real contact really for N Nuvo. The first real, real contact was when they said that they would not hinder us, but not help us. But in, in 2013, which is already good. <laughs> in 2013, they brought some documentation with them uh, at XDC. And, um, and yeah, we, it was NDA free, so we could just use it any way we want. And we got an email contact that we could, uh, where we could email questions and um, it's been working, it's not fast, uh, but it's been working, so that is nice. And they are willing to improve the out-of-the-box experience on Nouveau, which is the same objective that we have. In 2015, they, um, they had uh, a new um, well, NVIDIA developer who got hired just to work on Nouveau, or most of it, most of his time. And he had its support for the Tegra K1, X1, and X2 in Nouveau, so that was really nice because it even led to a product that was based on Nouveau that I don't think a lot of people know. And that is very, <laughs> I mean, very interesting because we would not have thought about this, but good. And, uh, and he also wrote the Secure Boot for Maxwell, which is um, all this VMware, uh, signed VMware procedure to, uh, yeah, how to upload it and how to get everything ready. It's, it's black magic, of course, and it's uh, highly undebuggable when you don't have, well, the right information. So that was very valuable. Unfortunately, he left last year, the company, and, um, and since then, the, the contributions have been, you know, way lower. And it's quite, I mean, it's to be expected as the, orga the organization reorganizes to, uh, to provide the same output. And, uh, but yeah, apparently 2018 is a new hope because we started by uh, getting a new documentation dump for the vBIOS table. And I'm gonna talk about this a bit after. Uh, yeah, so this is gonna be very useful and I also asked them for help on the, the, the weird uh, fan management issue because I just couldn't figure it out. It really is nuts. Um, okay, so about the, almost the last slide. Uh, Maxwell 2 GPUs or Pascal are the most locked GPUs that you can think of probably. Uh, you can't do anything without um, a firmware, so accelerated graphics, it takes us about um, well, about a year to get. Uh, so you, when you've got a release of a certain GPU, it's going to take about a year for, for us to get the firmware ready. And that's consistent throughout the last three years, so hopefully it's going to improve. Then the fan management, uh, well, really we can't do anything unless the firmware is provided. There's multiple engines and one of them is really crucial for power management. And this crucial fir uh, firmware we do not have, except for a couple of platforms, the Tegra ones. So we are pretty much stuck uh, for fan management, reclocking, power reading. And then the last one is really important, the vBIOS, reverse engineering, we cannot do if the way we've been doing reverse engineering of these uh, vBIOS is by 
as Carol said, we just changed bits in a 64 kilobyte um, yeah, binary, and then we just look at what output we get. And, um, and so that's what, what we've been doing since forever uh, to reverse engineer what the, the BIOS was about. And well, we can't do that anymore, starting from Maxwell 2. So how do we add support? So luckily they don't change a lot of things, so you can start guessing things. You can look at numbers like, like this 3000 here looks like the clock and I see it somewhere else. So it could be a clock, but then we can't verify what is gonna be the limits and, and if it really is that and nothing else. Um, so that's why we really need documentation from NVIDIA now uh, on the BIOS, like full documentation of the BIOS. It's not going to be perfect because, of course, documentation is never, but at least we'll have a better clue of what is going on. And, but related to the, the BIOS documentation, they released a website that allows you to sign your firmwares, and apparently even some NVIDIA developers didn't even know about it, and we heard about it last week. So there's something going on. It looks like there were links to that website. So it's not new. It's not new, okay. Okay, so what, what Arthur said does that six months ago you got yeah, the website got introduced and um, yeah it, it doesn't know what it what it is about. I think it's um, mostly used by overclockers and stuff like this, so they just changing the video bias to get higher clocks and so on. So I think that's the main reason. Yeah, so for us it still is going to be a pain because we used to test, I mean, I have scripts that automatically change numbers and then uh, update, um, I mean, and reload the, bias, reload the bias and then reload the driver and start X again and get some values and then go down and I do this like every four seconds for weeks at a time. <laughs> so if I, if I need to ask, you know, the, the, the system to uh, sign stuff all the time, there's no way it's going to work. But anyway, Nuo is improving. It's uh, still the default driver on all distributions. The GL driver is in pretty good shape with OpenGL 4.4 and 4.5 coming as soon as we can get the CTS failures uh, down to zero. Well, performance needs to improve for 4K displays. And it's unfortunate, uh, without reclocking, it, it's not going to be possible. So we have a lot of work there. But the power efficiency for laptop users has, uh, has uh, is going to improve thanks to the reclock. Um, clock gating patches that I reviewed last week, so hopefully they're going to land. And yeah, so please join the fun, because we, have, we are an interesting team, distributed everywhere. There's a lot, of, a lot of challenges in basically every aspect. And if you are a student, then you could um, join us um, through the uh, Google Storm of Code or the uh, Xorg Foundation's uh, Endless Vacation of Code. And yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that we have products for uh, pro products projects for you. See the corporate guy here now. <laughs> yeah. Then that is it. Yeah. Any okay. question? Um, I want to tell a little bit about the GSOC stuff. I take, took some time and I just, I think, for like 10 project ideas on the website. So if somebody's interested, please look there. There are lots of ideas. So. Um, we are quite sure it is it is possible to extract the firmware from the binary driver, but um, I think the people were, who who was looking into this was like, yeah, I don't like no idea where it is, and it's like stored in a way it's not fun to extract. So there are ways, but and even if we do extract it like in a hacky way. It's, uh, we can't redistribute it. So that's a problem. We cannot redistribute the binary. Yeah, but you could use, uh, include a script with your driver that uh, users could run. Like <laughs> so what he's saying is that we could have a script that extracts it from the, bi uh, from the, the proprietary driver and then deploys it on your... Yeah, exactly. So we actually have this for video decoding. And uh, unfortunately, it's not easy to generalize it for, um, for these VMWs. They are not stored in the same way, and obviously they've been trying to hide it. It may even be, you know, like, yeah, not signed, well, not signed, but like encrypted, but the key somewhere else. I mean, the thing is, uh, it's obfuscated, that's for sure.
Any other question? Oh, okay. Ask us later. Uh, yeah, you can come to us and we'll stay outside so you can answer your questions.